Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, well I thought I'd show you the um, Delta S that I uh, showed in my previous video. I've uh, got it set up here, I'm up in the attic so I've got a little bit more room. And we basically have a, um, apart from the monitor obviously which is a modern LCD, we've pretty much got a uh, early 90s um, Soviet computer set up here. It's not a hundred I'm not 100% happy with it yet. Uh, you can see it's running um, a game. It's just uh, it's the first tape that I found, um, Mars Sport. Um, it's just the first tape that I found out of a uh, box of um, Sinclair tapes to test to see if it would load with. Um, problem I'm having at the moment, I seem to be missing a colour. It should This should be RGB you're seeing at the moment. And um, as you can see I've got plenty of green and blue but I've got absolutely no red there. Um, the cable I'm using I think is right, so I've still got to look at that see what's um, happening. Uh, I can switch to black and white composite, and uh, that probably doesn't come out too well. You can see everything, but that's just a composite black and white um, image. I'll switch that back to um, RGB mode. I'll come into that, what I'm using there in a minute, because that's something I've just uh, come up with. But anyway, yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reset the um, Delta S now. And I'm going to see if I can get something to um, load from the tape that actually came with the Delta S when I bought it. So, let's just uh, hit the reset button. This is literally the first time I've uh, powered this computer up. Um, I uh, plug the power supply in. Um, the video lead I'm using is actually the video lead which I made up for my... Um, my C for a sever, or a few people have given me different pronunciations for this thing. But it's the video cable I actually made up for that. And um, from the information you can find on the web, they're actually um, pin compatible. They're exactly the same. Um, the five pin dead is wired the same. What is it? I think it's um, syncs on pin one, uh, grounds pin two. Um, and then it's like green on uh, three, uh, blue on four, and red on five, something like that anyway. Uh, but it's exactly the same from the data I can find online between uh, this and that little uh, Seva or Seva or whatever you want to, Seva or however you want to pronounce it. Uh, but like I said, I'm not getting all the colours. Anyway, let's uh, reset this if we can find where the reset button is. You see, there we go, that's what we're getting um, in the RGB um, mode. You know, I flip that to composite. That's what we're getting um, in the composite. Now we'll, um, I think we'll leave it on RGB even though there's um, obviously a colour missing there. We'll try this tape. This is the tape that actually came in the, pa in the bundle with the actual um, computer. So this has probably not been run since... Um, this computer was made in the uh, very early 1990s. Let's rewind my uh, I'm using my Philips computer compatible um, cassette recorder. So dates for that probably dates from the mid to late 80s. Uh, right, so here we are. As you can see, uh, copyright Sinclair research. So they haven't even bothered to try and uh, disguise uh, that it's uh, Sinclair ripoff unless this. I can't see if I'm having the ROM changed or anything because I've actually literally took it out of the packet. It uh, is brand new. So anyway, let's uh, do the usual. So we've got load with two little quote marks. I can press um, enter then and then we'll press play on the tape. Is that working? Yeah, I think we've got something um, happening. Let's see what this first... Um, Right, this is um, side A, hopefully. This is either going to, well, it depends on what side of the tape it is. We've either got, um, I don't know if that's going to show up on this camera. But we've basically, we've either got a um, test program or a demo. We can see we've got some loading now. Oh, we've got the demo. So uh, this is side B of the um, tape. Yeah, I'm definitely pretty sure we've got a. Um, the red's missing off the RGB, so I need to um, investigate that. Um, it could be a, um, a fault with this cable. I, I sincerely doubt it. 
I think the cables are um, good. I don't know actually. Have we just lost them? Um, everything there? No, no. So I think the um, I think the cable should be out. Okay. Uh, let's stop the tape. Oh, well, there we go. I say I can't actually read what it's um, doing, but it's putting some text all over the screen. But it's pretty obvious there that we are missing a um, red out of that. Now, as I know um, on the um, BK um, Facebook um, group, um, a few people, well, one person at least has asked me um, to run a few programs on this to give um, some timing testing and things like that. So I will um, do that when I get a minute. Um, now we know it's all up and running, but I do need to find out why I have um, no red signal there. Um, I'll probably get the. Um, I'll test all my um, all my video stuff here, um, and then I thought I'll be getting the scope out and having a quick look, see um, see where that's gone. Uh, it's a pity I can't read Russian because um, I actually haven't got a clue what any of this is uh, going on about. That's, uh, Presume it's teaching uh, different programming skills because I can see in here some of this looks like it's basic, like randomised. This is a, obviously a um, a term we're fairly familiar with. Print we're fairly familiar with, and that's the interesting. Well, it's not interesting. That's one of the thing about these um, Soviet clones. Um, you may obviously you can put Russian character sets into them and things. If you notice, there's a lot of this is in Russian here. But the basic itself is just Sinclair uh, 48k basic, there's no other uh, really difference to it. So uh, yeah, let's try one more while we're, uh, while we're here. We'll reset it. We'll try and run the next thing on the tape, which is um, Petrus, it says. It's going to be Tetris clone. Like I said, I don't know how well we're going to be able to see any of these with um, something missing on the uh, colours. But let's give this a try. And we have no audio at the moment either. I don't know whether these actually have a built-in speaker. I don't think the um, Del Tres has a built-in speaker. And if that's um, the case, at the moment we're not going to be getting anything out of the um, monitor audio-wise. Because the video output is just RGB video. There's nothing else there at all. So, um, what I need to do is make a cable up which... Um, comes out of the tape output and I believe I can then um, plug that into a little speaker and we can get some um, audio out of it. Um, I might actually do that as a little standalone speaker that you can just uh, plug into the back or uh, figure out a way to get it out of the tape player or something. What be a little high pitched screen you can hear is this um, old tape deck because I haven't actually serviced that really. It's, uh, it's got a general clean a while back but um, I think it is actually due a decent um, service. Well, let's see what we've got on screen now. Now is this going to load or isn't it? I'm not 100% sure. Does at least seem to be still um, sending data. Let's have a look at that into composite. That's in black and white. The composite output on this is just black and white composite. There's no um, colour composite there. And then we're back to our, um, well, we'll call it GB colour, seeing we uh, seem to be missing the R out of there. Just curious to see whether this piece of software will load, and then we'll um, have a closer look at it. I have the, uh, the, uh, Soviet um, joystick 125 which is the um, it's like a cheetah 125 um, clone it's actually um, the kind of joystick that um, I used to have for my Amstrad and um, C64 back in the day uh, I didn't have a huge amount of money and the local pound emporium uh, used to sell joysticks like this um, I think they literally did used to sell um, 
a joystick for £1.25 and it was something very very similar so this probably made in China I believe this is actually probably made in Russia yeah judging by the screws on it this is made in Russia uh, they were made in China but they were pretty much oh dear me uh, I did think we had two fire buttons down there but I, I they might be fire buttons if they are they're seized solid but I have a feeling they're just actually fakes and um, we've got a fire button there I think that might actually be fake as well I think the trigger button there is actually the only uh, only functioning fire button I'm going to take this apart and have a good look inside it and um, just see exactly how bad it is so I'll probably do a tear down and a look at this uh, joystick and that little game pad that um, came with it as well which um, I can't remember what I've done with at the moment but yes yeah, so we've got our uh, authentic joystick anyway and the um, huge power brick which uh, gets a little bit warm it's a little bit hot on top there it's not um, dangerously hot I've had no um, nasty smells or anything coming out of this um, computer since I've started playing with it so I'm uh, quite quietly confident that should be okay technically we are overriding them overriding them ever so slightly in the UK um, I think the Russian um, AC voltage is about 220 um, I know my electricity here is anywhere between 235 and 245 at the most times I've seen it as high as 250 on occasions not very often but it's almost certainly it's usually between 235 and 245 so that is a bit of extra power for that to um, dissipate I will have a look at that and I will do a tear down of that and I will do a opening up of the computer in a um, future video uh, possibly try to sort out this colour issue if it doesn't end up being um, just one of my cables or something I don't think it is one of my cables to be honest because um, I've tested this um, new little box with some other computers and it works absolutely fine with them. In fact, while we wait for this to load, I'll just show you this um, rather cool little box which I've um, been uh, playing with. I will, uh, yeah, I'll bring the whole tripod over so you can see uh, see what I'm showing you. Let's move you. Uh, let's move you. Uh, sorry about that. I uh, messed up with the camera then. Let's move you down and let you um, see this. Right, yeah, here's what I want to show you. This uh, little box here. Now, <clears throat> one of the problems we have with uh, these... Let me see if I can zoom that in. Let's see what we can do here. That's, yeah, that's better, isn't it? You will have to excuse that noise, but it's that um, tape recorder that I'm using. There we go. Right, this is what we're talking about, this little um, box here. One of the problems you have with these old um, systems is that they, um, if they output RGB, uh, modern SCARTs, they um, will accept RGB and composite, but to switch them into RGB mode you have pins 16 and 18 on the RGB connector, oh, sorry on the SCART connector, you have to put between 1 and 3 volts on, that connect on them two pins to switch a SCART into RGB mode. Now it's where you get that between 1 and 3 volts to actually um, switch it because things like this the um, Delta um, S it just gives out on its 5 pin DIN connector um, it gives out sync, ground and red, green, blue that's it there's no uh, voltage there to switch that RGB signal so what I've done is I've been, I've been playing about with this for a while and this is my final um, solution for it is I bought a little, um, it's a little three-way um, SCART splitter and I've added a switch to it in a little LED that you can see there and what this does is it's got, it's actually powered by um, USB uh, believe it or not we've got a USB, uh, that's just a little USB power supply like cheapest of the cheap um, phone charger power supplies you don't need a lot of current here, you could use a laptop you could use a power bank, anything you wanted. That's why I actually decided to run this off a 5 volt USB. So we've got a 5, five volt. You'll see this going to black and white when I unplug it. But you've got a 
literally a 5 volt USB connection there oh you can't see it because um, of the way I've got my camera but the, uh, when I've unplugged that I'll just uh, tilt you up to see the screen if you can see the screen's actually gone into black and white there let's just bring you back down onto my um, little box um, as I was showing you there it's um, powered off a um, USB connection let's just plug that back in there and all that that does is it goes through a little voltage regulator that I've um, built inside this box um, and it just produces I've actually it's the voltage regulator this is made out of bits and bats you know a couple of quid um, switch box and cable from the pound store and um, all the rest of the bits are just out of my junk box a switch a couple of capacitors um, and a little I think it's 2.5 volt or 2.2 volt voltage reg I salvaged off an old motherboard um, just to take the 5 volts from the USB and knock it down to something under 3 volts um, to switch the blanking, uh, to switch the RGB composite signal. So now it doesn't matter, I don't have to mess about with all my computers trying to find a um, voltage for that switching. I can make my cables really, really simple, just like the audio and the RGB out or the audio and the composite out. I plug them into this little box here. And then if I need RGB, I literally I can switch it. So uh, with the lights not on, it's in composite mode. If I switch it across like that, the light comes on. It switches the blanking signal on the um, telly and uh, or the monitor. Let's just um, zoom that out so you can see. So as you can see, that's in colour there. And if I flick the switch, it goes into mono composite mode. I flick the switch back so the LEDs on it's back into colour mode so yeah um, <coughs> it's quite a useful little thing that um, and what if anyone else is interested in this because like I say it's quite useful and it does um, simplify making a lot of your cables because you're not looking about for that extra voltage to switch your um, switch your composite RGB si signals uh, if there's enough interest I will make a video about how I made this it's not too hard to make it's a fairly easy um, first project like um, you do need soldering and a little bit of skill but um, yeah it's a nice interesting easy uh, project to do that well we've not got anything to load yet um, we've got anything on screen at all um, there uh, this was just a quick video to show you that the computer is actually working and um, I do still have a few things to sort out because I do need to get this um, signal sorted out um, I'm going to stop that tape now but it's obviously um, that's not loading at the moment we will um, try that again I think um, in a future video we'll just reset that so we've got the computer back on there but um, yeah as you can see it does load software um, it is working to that extent I do obviously need to look at these um, tapes I will have a look at getting some of the other software on this uh, running and um, show it on the screen but yeah I um, hope you enjoyed that like I say it's just a quick one just to show you where I've got up to with this um, computer I've got lots of other projects in the pipeline at the moment which I really really need to get um, finished and get um, some stuff finalised and what have you. I'll start starting other projects before um, I've finished the other ones, you know how it is. So yeah, so uh, thanks for watching for that and um, goodbye.